Hey guys, something of a special video for you today. So recently I celebrated my five year anniversary on YouTube and kind of as a thank you and also just because I haven't done it for a very long time, I thought I'd do a question and answer session. Now questions were left on my previous vlog and um, we're gonna answer them now. I'm from the Netherlands and I'm watching your videos, but what's the most interesting country you get used from on YouTube? Now, this is interesting because the UN defines um, that there are 206 sovereign nations in the world. And according to YouTube, I've had views from 222. So, I think YouTube might be making places up, but I just, I scrolled to um, the places where I've had like one or two views from over the lifetime of my channel. Um, and it's places like American Samoa, the Central African Republic, Turkmenistan, Nauru, Togo, Burundi, literally every country I think in the world. Which is mental when you think about it. Shivani Rambaran, you're awesome by the way, uh, asks, who's your favourite scientist? It's tough, actually. Um, I always had a really soft spot for Paul Dirac because he was like something else. He was just maths genius and on such a different plane that he shared very little with other, other mere mortals. But I've also I also really like Michael Faraday, who was a really nice guy from all accounts, um, and was this genius experimental physicist who in all of his notebooks there's not a single equation, and yet he was so instrumental to the work that happened and the, the physicist after him. Actually, if I had to pick one. It would probably be one of the people that used Faraday's work, and that was James Kurt Maxwell, because he was he was a mixture of the two. He was this theorist who was absolutely brilliant. He he did the second great unification of physics after Newton, um, and he was also apparently just a really really lovely sweet guy who was very caring. So yeah, James Kurt Maxwell, why not? How long did it take for you to decide what your PhD would be about? Well, when I applied for my PhDs and stuff, and I was accepted here at Exeter, and if you've watched my Draw My Life, you'll know that this this wasn't the PhD that I actually applied for. Um, I was basically told that it was on stratosphere stratosphere coupling. So, I kind of knew the field that it was going to be in, but I didn't know what my research project was. It actually took me about a year of reading through papers, um, trying things out, doing a bit of explore, ex data exploration, um, before I really knew what I wanted it to be about. Um, and now I've got a definite research question. It took about a year, I guess, of, of relatively in-depth trying to think of a question. Will you be doing more videos on your PhD? Yes, I will be, definitely. There's a series on the stratosphere coming up quite soon, so I'll be doing that. What do you lost most about physics and which topics are your favourite? I guess that's meant to be love most about physics. Um, if that is what you meant, then... It's magic. That's what I like about physics. I like the fact that it takes a quantity which you know, and it, with a little bit of trickery and maths, it gives you a quantity in the end that you didn't know before. So you know you know how much something weighs and how much it initially moves, and given what surface it's on, it will, physics will tell you how far it will move. That's essentially magic, right? It's, it's telling you information you don't otherwise know. That's what I love. Um, in terms of my favourite topics, I really like. I do really like fluid mechanics. Um, which I use a fair bit at the moment using primitive equations in the atmosphere. But I also, I really like special relativity. There's a very, when, when you do special relativity in, pure, in four vectors, it's very, very pure, and I really like that about it. Um, yeah, there's very few things about physics, like there's very few topics I did at undergraduate that I really disliked. Um, I don't know, I guess I tried to approach it with an open mind. I, I love all of it, you know. If only you were gay, Sai. So. Sorry, I, that, there's not much I can say about that. There are a few questions like this. Um, I'm just going to pick this one from Spanglish Hannah. Could you do a video explaining your PhD, what it is you have to do, and your daily life, and stuff like that? Now, I will be doing a, a day in the life of a PhD student. Um, that will hopefully be quite soon, actually, because it's still term time and it won't be for very much longer. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to do a day in the life. That's a helicopter, ignore that. <laughs> That's the hospital, I think. But I would also really like to do a video explaining what my PhD is about. I'm going to be doing talking about the stratosphere in this series that's coming up soon. Um, but and the last video on that is basically going to talk about what I do. I would like at some point though to do a video, just a quick one, explaining you know my project. But I've also I don't know I don't know if the people would be interested in this. I was thinking the other day of there are a lot of very abstract concepts that I don't fully understand yet in my field, and maybe making a quick three minute video about this concept, explaining it to a lay audience would be a good way for me to understand it. You know, if that's something that you might find useful then, you know, 
give me a shout in the comments. Hi Simon, in one of your videos you mentioned that you somehow failed your first year of undergraduate. How did you pick yourself up after that? Like, what exactly were you motivated by, or did you take your daily schedule more seriously, etc. Thanks. Um, it's tough question to answer actually. I think I just, uh, it wasn't so much motivated by a particular thing other than just I didn't do well at this and that's not what I do. I do well at things so I'm gonna do it again but I'm gonna do way way better. Um, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if there's anything more fundamental than that that was just driving me to, to do well because that was that's my thing. In terms of how I pit myself up that was tough. That was there was there was a few days of soul searching when I was kind of like, is this really for me? Am I good enough to do this? And I sort of went, well, let's try again. And if I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. And we'll do something else. But there's no point in just rolling over and giving up. You've got to try at least. So that's what I did. Okay, this is a long one. I'll warn you now. Hey Simon, my question is, to what extent do you think theoretical physics is a useful career to enter, especially considering the fact that there is sometimes much at stake on many, one or many theories slash ideas? Apologies if I sound a bit naive, I'm currently studying my first year of A-levels and I was wondering what your take on this matter as soon as you studied the subject whilst you were at undergrad. Now, it's very important to realise, and this happens all the time in physics, if you are studying physics as an undergraduate, and theoretical physics, you know, say specifically, that doesn't mean that's all you're going to do for the rest of your career. So most people will study physics and then go off and do something else, like banking or programming or another degree or teaching or anything, really. Um, it's very unusual that people will take the material from their course and exclusively do that for the rest of their lives. What theoretical physics does, and theory more than other parts of physics, is it gives you a toolkit that you can use in other situations. It's very logical, it's very mathematical, and so if you do theoretical physics, or physics generally, it makes you employable in a huge number of fields. Basically anything that's even vaguely technical would be interested in having you, because, you know, it, it, it's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like if you got really good at, say, football, that doesn't just mean that you can only do football, it means you're also better equipped to do hockey or rugby or swimming because you've built up a physical toolkit that you can use to other situations. With physics, it's exactly the same, it's just mental rather than physical. So don't be worried about applying for physics and thinking that there's no career prospects, because there really are. Just follow what you're interested in and that's the best decision you can make. What's your favourite book? I agonised about this, I was thinking about this for ages the other day. Choosing one is really difficult because I love lots of different books for different reasons. I love, for example, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley because it made me think for the first time um, more seriously about societal issues. Uh, I love Six Easy Pieces by Feynman because it really got me into physics. If I had to pick one book, it would be My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell because it's a nice, easy read, it's really sweet, it's perfect, like, relaxing it's perfect for relaxing too and it really got me going on environmentalism and conservation when I was a kid so it was important to me as well and if you haven't read it absolutely go and check it out you will not regret it I'm changing hands because this apparently weighs a ton Lily on point has asked like a million questions right number one are you a nerd fighter DFTBA and hell yeah number two what do you think are the most important qualities to have if you want to study physics what abilities should you work on before taking my degree maths basically. Um, math, uh, physics at uni is basically the same as maths and further maths um, at A-level, at least it was for me, particularly the mechanic side of things, that like, was like high, half of my first year. Um, work on maths, probably a good idea to work on a programming as well, because a lot of physics courses, mine did, uh, in, involve at least a programming component, and my research now is almost entirely it, so maths and programming. Number three, how do you tackle school-related anxiety and stress? Make sure you allocate enough time in your in your schedule for doing not work things. Um, I started meditation when I was at uni and that really helped. Um, yeah, it's basically, it's like studying, um, the, the point I made in my studying video, it's basically a very individual thing, so do whatever it takes for you to chill out. I'm just going to talk over that shower. And question number four, lastly, I want to read some physics books so I can put my personal statement, and guessing they shouldn't just be popular science books, but can't find any reading lists. Do you know of any physics books that are good in the personal statement, but also generally good informative books? I did a two-part uh, physics book recommendations video, if you haven't already seen that, I'll put a link in the description. Um, in addition to that, I'm pretty sure that Oxford makes its physics reading lists public, so if you go on the physics website, uh, the physics department website for Oxford, and under 
students probably, then check it out there. There's probably something. Jamie Clark, nice surname, has asked, I have a question. Are Oxford and Cambridge the be all and end all of science academia? I really want to do physics, but I prefer London University, so am I hampering my possible future career? No, no you're not. That You're not hampering your future career and they're not the be all and end all. Uh, fundamentally, Oxford and Cambridge are just unis that are very good at science. There are other unis that are also very good at science, like Imperial and Manchester. So go wherever you're going to be happy. Don't feel like you have to apply to Oxbridge if it's not right for you. So many people fall into the trap, go to Oxbridge and are not happy. So really consider what's going to make you happy and what's best for you and do that. And lastly, there's been a whole series of questions about this. I'm going to pick Perspectologist's uh, question. Uh, what's your fitness routine and is that an important part of your life? Do you believe that being fit has helped your academic performance? So I started trying to take my fitness seriously in my third year at Oxford uh, and trying to lose a bit of weight and get more in shape. Um, I sort of did that a little bit in Oxford but since I moved to Exeter I'm really lucky in that Exeter has a phenomenal gym and I also now live with a housemate who's a qualified personal trainer and nutritionist so I've got access to like this sensei who I can ask questions of and I try and work out at the moment, I'm on a bulking phase, to answer somebody else's question about is my chest getting bigger every video, hopefully yes. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work out three days a week with lifting heavy weights, and I'm meant to be doing cardio two days a week, but that hasn't really been happening recently because I'm, what's the word, lazy. But I do think it's important to do, I, I mentioned this in my How to Study About TV video, it's, I, think, I think it's an important part of being around an individual, being fit and healthy and strong anyway. But I, I think it's really important to do exercise, it's just a chance to blur some steam. You know, if you're studying all day, you need a chance just to really vent some frustration. And particularly, I personally find lifting weights very cathartic because you can vent all your frustrations and just be like, Ugh, push this heavy thing away from me. It's kind of what you want to do with all your studying, but it's a bit irresponsible. <laughs> and somebody else asked, how much do you bench, squat and deadlift? Um, not enough is the short answer to that. I squat like, I mean, I, I've not done a one rep max, so I don't know exactly how much I could on each one. I bench like 60 kilos, squat about 70, deadlift about 80. Um, if, you're if you're talking like long sets of say 8 reps and 5 or 6 sets. Um, which I realise puts me in the category of not very strong people, but um, I've only been lifting with a bar for just over a year, so I'm relatively new to all this. But um, I'm getting there, I'm, I'm, uh, with this bulky phase I'm actually improving a lot. So. Fingers crossed that'll get those figures will, will get bigger the next time uh, I, I do another Q and A video. So thank you everyone who sent in those questions. I'm really sorry if yours didn't get read out. Um, basically, I didn't want this video to be a million years old, and I think I covered all the, the basic like territory that people wanted covered. So thank you again for subscribing to me and for supporting me over the past five years on YouTube. When I put it like that, that is mental. That's a substantial fraction of my life I've been making videos. It wouldn't be possible if you guys didn't actually enjoy the, the content I put out and stick with me. So thank you, honestly, uh, so much for doing that. And um, next week there will be a video on uh, it's going to be the Applying to Oxford and Cambridge video next week where we are sort of laying out all the resources and talking through any possible question you might have. And between then there's also going to be more XCOM. So stick around for that. And um, Thank you very much for watching. If you like this, like it and do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do at the end of videos and subscribe and like and check out all my merch and yeah, all that stuff. And lots of hand waving. Apparently I do lots of hand waving. Anyway, bye.